All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel, Santiago AQ over here. And today I'm gonna show you how I got a 272 on the USMLE without taking a single note. So let's get to it. Okay, to begin with the right foot, I wanna make sure we're all on the same page. That's why I'm showing you what I like to call the dogma of med student learning, which is basically all of the steps that med students usually go through to try to learn a topic for a test such as the USMLE. First, they watch a video or they read a book, some, some sort of input, let's say, then they take notes, they try to summarize the important points, and then they go over those notes trying to memorize those important points. Then they apply all of that knowledge doing some type of test, usually in the form of Q-Banks. Now, if you want to understand exactly how I managed to change this dogma, we first have to abstract the underlying processes that you're doing in each one of those steps. In the first step, in watching and reading, you're actually learning. That's what you're doing. You're learning. Then you're creating a backup, a summarized backup, let's say. Then you're reviewing that backup in order to memorize the content. And then you apply everything you learn because, well, applying it's sort of a skill on its own. Now, to eventually change this dogma, I came up with a couple of premises. And the first one of them is that the only utility of taking notes for the USMLE is creating a backup to review later. Like that's the only utility. And I think we can all agree on that because we know that translating information for let's say the first date or boards and beyond videos to our notes is only translating information from one place to another. Like it doesn't magically makes us understand or even memorize the content, but it creates like a summarized version of all of those resources. So we tend to think that it's worth it because we can just review that summarized version over and over again. Now, the thing you need to understand is that there are a couple of big cons about that whole backup of your notes type of thing. First, creating your notes, creating notes of everything that the step one and the step two covers, even if you're just annotating on your first date, takes a lot of time. And the second thing is that when you have those notes, given that you were the one who created those notes, you'll start rereading on, on your review in, with a sense of, I know this, I know this. So as Mark McDaniel says, that second reading becomes cursory, insidious, and it makes you think you know when in fact there are flaws. But the thing is, and most people tell this to me, like, okay, I know that taking notes has a lot of issues, but I just don't find any other way to review the content over and over again until I memorized. Like, what am I supposed to do? Watch all of the videos twice or read all of the Kaplan books again and not take notes? It seems equally inefficient. So if only we were to find like an already done summarized backup created for us that we didn't have to take our times off to create, that helps us summarize the information in order to review it multiple times to grind it into our memory, that uh, bypasses the whole familiarity problem, we'd be set. Like, that would be it. Well, turns out that summarized backup actually exists and it was hiding in front of our faces all along in the form of question banks. You see, all question banks have answers. And if you think about it, those answers are sort of like notes, only delivered in tiny chunks. But if you were to clump all of those notes together, all of those answers together, you'd have something like a book, like a file of notes of everything, really. And the good thing about them is that you don't have to create them, like they're already done for you. You don't have to spend a single minute creating those notes. You just have to pay for them. Second, you bypass the familiarity problem because again, they were not created by you. So you won't be reading with the sense of, I know this, I know this, I know this. On top of that, given that they were created by a team of persons, you'll get a lot of different perspectives explaining the same subject. So if you find it hard grabbing your head around a specific subject, maybe a certain explanation on one of those questions helps you to understand the subject better. And additionally, on top of everything else, those notes sort of integrate a space repetition and application altogether. Because you have to understand that most subjects in the question banks repeat themselves over and over again. So you'll get a lot of repetition and you'll be reviewing the special notes, you'll, you'll be reviewing the special answers over and over and over again. So if you think about it, question banks are sort of like a mix of super notes, super flashcards and question bank all at the same time. They help you 
review, they help you memorize, and they help you learn how to apply your knowledge all at the same time. So they're great. And the, the only thing that really scares people when I uh, propose this to them is that they believe, oh, but the, the notes, when I create my notes, I have the benefit that I can go over them every time I want. Like if, for example, I found an explanation on a question bank and I want to review it further, I want to review it in the future, I don't have that choice. I Finding the answer, finding the question, but the specific question is almost a nightmare. And I agree that's probably the most difficult part of using question banks as your notes, but you can always mark questions. And by marking them, you're able to review them later in the future whenever you need to. Additionally, other question banks such as Ambos allow you to create folders at will. So for example, if you wanna create a folder specifically about notes you wanna review, well, notes, explanations you wanna review about cardiology, you can do so. You can create that folder and you can put two, three, 10, 20 questions over there. And every time you need to review them over and over again, you just click on the folder, go ahead and review them as many times as you want. So basically what I did is I went from learning, creating, reviewing, applying to learning, don't creating anything, and then reviewing, applying all at the same time. And for my step one, that was it, like it ended there. But for my step to CK, I wanted to test a second premise because you see, I started seeing, I started realizing that the same QBank in itself gave me tons of information, like it was a learning resource. In fact, I often found that QBanks were better at explaining some subjects than were uh, the books and videos and the Ambus library and so on and so forth. For instance, when I was reading transverse myelitis, I found it so general everywhere. Like for example, if you read up to date, if you read the Ambus library, it just said like, it can give motor sens sensitive and autonomic symptoms. But exactly how does it present? Like, I, I wasn't sure of the specifics. It was so general. Now, when I found a, a question on that topic, the way the stem was set up, it made me realize, ah, so those are the sensitive symptoms they were talking about. Those were the motor symptoms they were discussing. That's how they present autonomic symptoms. Like, it makes you realize how exactly all of that information is going to be presented. And by you realizing that th those details, everything becomes so much clearer. So I don't know, I, I wanted to test, what if I used just QBanks as a learning resource? Like wh what if everything, learning, reviewing, applying, everything came off straight from the QBanks? So I tested that, I ran the experiment. I said to myself, okay, for my step to CK, I'm only gonna do questions. Like I'm not going to review books, videos, nothing, just questions. If I found a specific subject that I cannot grasp with just the explanation from the QBank, then I'll go ahead and review it further in the Ambus library, in up to date or in YouTube, wherever I need to. But mostly it will just be question banks. And well, here you have the result. A couple of disclaimers though. First, I did made about 500 flashcards, so take that into account. I spent no more than 30 minutes a day, but I did make some flashcards. And second, I marked about 1600 questions, give or take, between Ambos and UWorld, because again, those were sort of like my notes. That second pass of the marked ones served me as a review of my notes. So yeah, that was pretty much how I did it. That's pretty much how I got the score I got without taking a single note. I just reshaped the whole dogma of med student learning to do everything at the same time from just one resource. I don't know if it makes sense to you, try it out. But anyways, that was really everything for the video. If you found it useful, make sure to leave a like and comment down below. That really helps me to continue uploading content such as this one completely free of charge for you guys. And if you wanna stay tuned for more content, just subscribe and click the bell. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next video.